We're going to try a budget. We're going to try to prepare the January and February budget for Fargo Company. They produce uh, premium landscape mulch. You can see what I've been doing this weekend. And so we have to start with information about the December 2019 financial statements. And then we have more information about the budget for 2020. To get started on a budget, you do it backwards. As things happen, you buy materials, you produce something, and then you sell it. To do your budget, you go backwards. You look at your sales, that will tell you your production, which then will tell you what your materials have to be. So our unit sales have to be given in problems. In real life, that's rather complicated. You might do regression, they'll talk to your salespeople, but in problems, we just have to give it to you. And then your uh, price per unit is 25. So then your sales dollars are just those um, multiplied together. Excel is just made for budgeting because if you do this by hand, you have to do a ton of little calculations, but here you can just take this and copy it across, but you have to be a little careful. Notice this changed it. It's $25 every period at minute 25, 26, 27, 28. Sometimes Excel and Word just think they know more than you do and they don't. So it uh, depends on your, um, settings, sometimes it will do it right, but sometimes you have to click that little thing and then do copy cells, and that will copy it rather than assuming you're trying to number um, consecutively. All right, so be a little careful because you get uh, a little bit overconfident with Excel, and when it looks like a computer did it, you think it's right, and it may not be. So the next thing we wanna do is our production budget. In books, they generally put production at the bottom and they have this cute little schedule, but I always get mixed up on what you add and subtract. So I just use the cost of goods sold formula and I use that every single time. It works better for me. You can do whatever you want, you'll get the same answer. So well, I'm gonna do beginning inventory plus production gives you available for sale, less ending gives you units sold. Remember the production budget though is in units. So stay in units. We don't care about the dollar amount. So our beginning inventory in January is our ending inventory in December. So this 11,008, again, you're going in bags of mulch is what I need to put there. We're gonna solve for production. So I'm gonna go down here. I know units sold that's sitting right here looking at me. So I'm gonna pick that one. And then I have to come up with this ending inventory. Again, the problem has to give you what that calculation is. And every problem is different. So read it very carefully and do it exactly the way they tell you to do it. So here, finished goods inventory is 150% of next month's sales, which kind of makes sense. If February is going to be a really big month, I want a bigger ending inventory. If February is a slow month, I probably want a smaller ending inventory. But every problem's different, and so this one's 150% of next month's sales. So that would be February sales times this 150. And if you put these dollar signs around the 150, it's going to make your life easy. You can just type those, or I hit the F4. Um, different keyboards are a little different on how you get the F4 to work. Um, so play with it, but that's going to be my, make my life easier. So again, 150% of 12 is 18. Then I'm just going to back my way up the cost of goods sold. So I know that some number minus 18 has to equal nine. So 27 minus 18, nine, that looks like it works. And then something plus 11.8 has to equal 27. So I need to subtract those. When I'm done, I always just double check. Um, so 11 plus 15, looks like that's 27. 27 minus that's nine, so that looks right. Okay. This production number 15.2 is the one we're really solving for. 
So then I moved to February. And before I get overly confident and start copying, got to think a little bit. Beginning inventory in February comes from ending inventory in January. So again, you don't do anything between January 31st and February 1st. So those two numbers have to be the same. But once you get that, the rest of it, you can just copy over. And once you get that, you can take all of them and copy over because this will grab that number. So those are the, that's the production budget. I've got a little spot over here. I'm just going to kind of keep some calculations I know I'm going to know need later on. So this, um, I'm only doing February. So this 16.5 is February's ending inventory, uh, finished goods ending inventory. So I'm just going to need that. I might need that a little later. So I'm going to put that over there. Okay. So that's your production budget. 